Welcome to Jolie Farms in Ecuador. Today we're going to do a little demonstration about making soil blocks. Soil blocks is um, what we like to use to start our seeds in. And uh, we find that we get tremendous germination results with the soil blocks. Um, it air prunes the roots on the sides so that they, the plant just grows better. Uh, we've quit using plastic trays and we've resorted to this method. And uh, we're just 100% satisfied with it. The first thing we have to do is show you the mixture that we use. So we use a mixture of uh, just a really good potting soil or dirt. You can use sifted compost if you like. So I mix a little bit of that in there. And then I have a, uh, a mix that has some perlite in it. Now you can make this any way you want. You just need a good mix that will um, hold together when it's wet and not dry out too fast. So this mixture here has some really good stuff in it that, that maintains a moisture level and will keep things uh, nice and, and wet. Because we know that that affects seed germination is if that seed dries out any point during germination, it's not going to germinate. So it's very critical that we maintain that moisture. I'm gonna mix all this together by hand here. Just get this going. I like to do this in one of these little tubs because it just works out well all the way around. You'll see why here in just a minute. These are just some local mixes that I'm able to get here. You can make your own just as easy. Um, I just do this for a little bit of convenience sake and uh, works well for me. Don't really need any fertilizer in this because your seedlings are good for the first 10 days after germination before they're going to need any type of uh, any type of fertilizer. Then I would just do a mild solution of seaweed and uh, just give them a little spray with that, and that's more than they'll need. We're going to move over here to my trusty potting bench. We'll set this up right here. Now the important thing about soil blocks is your mixture needs to be um, very much like the uh, mud pies you used to make when you were a kid. If they're too wet, they kind of fall apart. If they're too dry, they won't stay together either. So it's got to be just perfect. Here I have some good non-chlorinated water. Rainwater is probably best. I'm going to pour a little water in there. We'll do a little bit at a time. I'll mix it up with my little gardening trowel. And if for some reason you do get it too wet, you can always come back and add some more of your mix and make it a little bit drier mixture. You want to make sure you get every bit of it good and the same amount of moisture in all of this. You don't have clumps that are dry, clumps that are too wet. It used to be really uh, kind of like a mortar mix. If you've ever done brickwork or anything, it's kind of like that. So again, here's why I like one of these little pans. It mixes really well in here. It keeps things from falling out onto the ground and wasting material. Um, you can use your own potting soil mix, as I said. A um, little bit of sifted compost in there works real good to help hold it together. Um, this mix I got with the perlite in it actually has a white uh, kind of peat moss in it. So the peat moss works real good at maintaining moisture. Um, say what you want about peat bogs not being very you know, environmentally friendly. We still have to use a little bit of it from time to time. I buy a bale of peat moss with this perlite mixed in. Gosh, it's lasted me two years. So um, it's not like I'm going to run the world out of it. All right. Looks like I might have poured in just the right amount of water. So we're going to take a quick look at this. So I pour this up like this, make a little mud pie patty out of it. And you can see that's kind of staying together pretty good. Might be a little bit damp, um, but we know how to solve that. We can always just add a little more of our mixture. We'll just make some of this mixture uh, 
lighten it up just a tad so it's not quite so wet. Oop, spilling a little bit. Got a little too much going on in there. All right, getting it mixed in really good. So the important things to remember about seed germination is you need temperature. The soil is not the right temperature. Some seeds are different, but most seeds are going to need to germinate somewhere between about 68 degrees and 75 degrees. Um, some vary a little bit from that. But so if your temperature is not right, seeds aren't going to germinate. Seed quality is extremely important. What I mean by seed quality is, are you starting out with a seed that has been stored properly and uh, hasn't uh, gotten moisture in it? Because if your seeds are too old or they haven't been stored properly, then they're not going to germinate. And as I mentioned before, if your seed dries out, it's certainly not going to germinate. So all those things are very important. So here's our little soil block maker. You can order this from Amazon for about 28 bucks comes with these little nipples that make the hole in order to uh, drop your seed into the soil block. And it comes with different size nipples that are different depths. And you can take these in and out and replace them with the ones you like. I'm using these right here because I just really like this size. This is a two inch soil block maker. It's stainless steel. Works extremely well. So you simply take that and you want to work that down really hard into that soil because you want to compact that soil up into that soil block maker. I sometimes will even take a little soil on the outside like this and press it in with my hand. I'm not sure I got a good solid uh, mass in there. You want that little chamber completely full of soil. Okay, so I think we got that in there pretty good. I use these little plastic lunch trays, but you can use wooden boxes or plastic you know, boxes, whatever you want to use. Um, I just happen to like these. And I'll tell you why I like them in just a moment. So once I've got the soil block makers firmly down on the bottom, I will lift up as I push down on the handle. And as you can see, I'm going to come out with this really nice little soil block. Now, these should be like this, where you can take them apart without them crumbling. You see the little hole in there for the seed. And once I drop my seed in, I'll just crumble a little bit of this mixture over the top and slightly tap it in. So I have good soil to seed contact. Remember that term, good soil to seed contact. That's very important. As you can see, I'm really working this in there nice and hard, packing it in there. We're a nice, uh, solid chamber, really packed full of soil. We'll go kind of quickly on the rest of these. Leave a little space between them. And that's so that you can water down between them. You don't want to use a, a heavy sprayer and spray them because you might de disintegrate the soil block. So I like to use a little watering can down between the uh, rows. You can use a pump sprayer and just lightly spray the top of them. But uh, it's much better to water your plants from the bottom up. You're training them to go down to look for water. You're training the roots. So might as well start that training process early on so your plants will be used to that. So another row here. Sorry if sometimes I sound like I'm breathing heavy, but it's the elevation here. And um, I have very poor left lung capacity from uh, damage from a uh, a disease a long time ago. Here's the. All right, two more. Uh, see, if you got one that comes out like this right here, I was kind of hasty with that, but that won't hurt a thing. We'll still get the seed in there, even though there's a little indentation, and we'll fill that up with a little bit of dirt when we plant the seed.
You can see how that one didn't have quite enough dirt in it, so I'm packing a little bit more in there just to make sure we get a good amount all the way around. Okay, that one came apart a little bit there. That's quite all right. We'll make that work. Just like making mud pies. Now, we have 32 cells to plant seeds in in this one little bitty tray. That's quite a few seeds. Again, you notice I've left this room between the rows, so I can go ahead and water down between there. And the little tray holds just enough water that these soil blocks will soak it up from the bottom up. You won't need to water these for at least three or four days. But then you need to keep an eye on them. You may have to water them every day, every other day. Just as you see they're starting to dry out up at the top, that's where you don't want it to dry out because that's where your seeds contain. You always want to plant your seeds no more than twice the width in depth. Um, if you plant a seed too deep, that'll affect your germination as well. If you plant a seed too shallow, it's not going to have a good root structure on it. So it needs to be the proper depth. For the seeds I'm about to plant, which is broccoli, cauliflower, things like that, this will work extremely well. Okay, so once we get these seeds up and growing, we'll come back and we'll show you um, what the plants look like, what germination looks like, and hopefully it'll be a great success and you can try this yourself. Again, soil block maker is uh, stainless steel. Uh, however, you want to make sure you wash this and clean it every time when you're done. Wash it all out and then hang it up to dry really good. Hope you enjoyed this video. Give us a thumbs up if you liked it, and please subscribe if you haven't already. Have a great day.